So just scrying the aether of rye on this, the second day of Dresaya. And I'm seeing a, once again, a spiral, three-dimensional funnel-like. And, and this is sort of coming up to heaven and surrounding the earth as a sphere about the earth itself. So it's sort of going up like this and then coming all the way around in a big globe. So once again, we have this image of a Taurus and the angels are sort of telling me, it's like you have one, an, a shift in one parameter of this, and they, they swear that they will relate this back to the heart, but you have this shift in one parameter that causes what might just be a circle to turn into a spiral, another that would turn it into a three-dimensional spiral, and one more that would cause it to come down and then come back down to the earth, thereby creating a three-dimensional Taurus-like uh, object beginning as, you know, seeming like merely a sphere, but really coming down and then at the very middle um, appearing like a sphere. So they're mentioning this is a threefold change in three dimensions. Now the angels gave me particular instruction to pay attention to a quaternary or a fourness or a quadruplicity. If you were to I believe that's it, sometimes I get the, them confused, but anyway, a fourness and they're just saying that in the fourth dimension that this is what it appears like unto. So in order to reach a fifth dimensional thing, you're making four parameter adjustments. And so relating this to the heart, as you are developing certain different aspects of your heart, always remaining true to it, but sort of like extruding it out, seeing for example, maybe the first time you've seen a puppy, right? That creates a certain feeling in you. If you happen to love animals, I hope you do. And the angels are pressing upon me that the different forms of love and the different objects of our love or subjects of our love is probably a better way of putting it. These people, they bring forth something that admires the other person. Now, of course, all of these things are within ourselves, but it's the certain particular way that it comes together in the other person, right? So as we discover new capacities for love, for ourselves, for others, um, for certain things that, ways that we want to show love to somebody else or to ourselves, then all of a sudden, it's like um, we've reached this new dimension, okay? And the thing to bear in mind about this is that we are doing our best in realms that we don't necessarily fully understand, right? You can always do okay by staying true to your heart, but because we don't necessarily understand it, we may... Um, our heart is feeling pure, but we may wind up trying to take a while to integrate the heart and its feelings with, with a larger meaning. And so we see here, this is sort of a tension between the, for those of you Kabbalistically inclined, a tension between the heart, Tiferet, and Bina, which is Saturn, which is at times a heaviness, but really it's that potential for meaning. And so the things that our heart chooses to take on can become like a weight. Now, sticking with it, 
trying our best to find understanding and remaining true to the heart, that is when the heart can, you know, if, if we keep it soft towards others, no matter what happens, right? Whether we're wronged, whether we wrong someone else, um, whether or not we love, whether or not we can stay, whether or not the other person passes away, all of these things, right? The main goal here, or the main thing at the end of the rainbow, let's put it that way, the main outcome is that the heart remains soft so that it can be both clear and provide you all of these different facets to look at as a jewel would, specifically as a diamond would, for example, but it remains clear it, remain, it has all of these beautiful facets, but the slight differences, and once again, this is a theme that's coming up, is that the heart is like a, is, is, is liquid. It's a liquid, like a liquid or, um, it's so, it remains soft and pliable. So maybe not quite a liquid, maybe something semi-solid or something like that, something kind of squishy, right? But this is the importance of continuing to um, look out, being true to what our heart is feeling, acknowledging all the different varieties of, of it, and just accepting it. And that's always so much easier said than done, because we feel so many different ways about so many different people. But just accepting that we, ha we are in this world in which our feelings go through a big roller coaster, um, then that is the first step, right? And learning to keeping an accepting attitude and maybe questioning why we're, we might be inclined not to accept, getting at that and doing that work is what allows for all of these different um, we'll, we'll call them elements within the alembic or better yet within the crucible. It allows all of those things to suddenly become that jewel at the heart, that philosopher's stone. But it remains soft. I'm reminded a little bit of Full Metal Alchemist, the true form of the philosopher's stone is liquid. And we pour our own souls into it. And that's when we're giving it to ourselves and to others. So I'm asking the angels if they have anything else. And I'm seeing a very great figure arise. It's a little bit like this worm and it's kind of coming down to like swallow me. And it's sort of like... Um, this does remind me a little bit of Tex and of Rai the first time where there was a lot of um, sort of body horror, for lack of a better term. But what I'm getting the sense is that, and, and by the way, this is sort of having to do with astrologically what's going on um, with the transit to my nodes, the nodes having a lot to do with swallowing and digesting and excreting. But what I'm seeing is it's like... Um, I come to like the center of this long worm-like creature uh, within it and it's like there are, it's literally bending. So this is a message to me clearly about the bending of the nodes. And they're pointing to a decision point for me. So this is a time astrologically when individual decisions can arise, you know, when, when they become much more important. And when you, as opposed to like a lot of other astrology, this is a time very much of like free will. And they're pointing to this light that is between the way I'm seeing it, it would land in Gemini. And it's this light Basically, it seems like when Jupiter lands right at the bending of my nodes in my natal chart and to just see a light there and to decide in favor of the light. 
in spite of everything else, sort of, is the implication there. And then I'm seeing the worm sort of fan out in like a, a multi-dimensional, maybe beyond an orthoplex, let's say six, seven, eight dimensional um, form of the equivalent to the octahedron in that dimensional space. So it's like something really big opens up. So this is always good news. Uh, and I'm asking if there's anything else. And it's like I'm seeing this same figure, the same figure uh, spin faster and faster. And it's like there's this, if you've ever seen some kind of cartoon or something where there's a lot of energy going through something and it starts giving off more and more light as it spins faster and faster. Uh, that's the implication for making this decision, this good decision. And I'm asking if there's anything else and they're saying no. So thus ends the vision.